Driver reclassification. That is a phrase Uber, Lyft, and most drivers despise. A lot of us are not big fans of having ourselves reclassified. Many folks believe it puts the independent contractor label in jeopardy. Uber and Lyft would have to go from essentially letting you be on your own to having to adhere to labor law. So they don't like driver reclassification either. Nevertheless, I do strongly believe this is really good news for drivers coming out of the state of Illinois. Now, this is in concern with our safety. We've been doing videos, at least on this channel and many other channels, about drivers complaining that passengers can rent or hail rides, not even using their real name, no profile picture. Person A can hire you for person B and you don't know who the hell person B is. There is a huge safety issue involved in ride sharing. I'm doing videos almost every other day of a driver or a passenger losing their lives, being sexually assaulted, or just having an unsavory ending when trying to get from point A to point B. It is simply put, not safe out here. So what Illinois is doing is trying to make a dent in how dangerous this profession has gotten. And as I pointed out in the previous video, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics has actually uh, designated ride sharing and ride hailing and food delivery among one of America's most deadliest, not dangerous, deadliest professions. So it is what it is. It's very dangerous out here. So here's what happened and why this is uh, taking root. There was a female passenger in the state of Illinois that called an Uber or a Lyft. They just say ride share, so they don't say which one. Anyhow, the female was raped by the driver. She sued the company, and the company won on the grounds that it is not responsible for passenger or driver safety. That's where this bill is coming from. Here is an Illinois politician on why this is needed. House Bill 2231 puts rideshare companies like Uber and Lyft on the same playing field as taxis and other common carriers. The policy rationale for granting this statutory exemption nearly a decade ago no longer makes sense and its extended use harms public safety. Now, some of that is bullshit. The policy rationale for granting this statutory exemption nearly a decade ago no longer makes sense. Hell, it didn't make sense a decade ago. Why the hell was Uber or Lyft ever given an exemption for being accountable for who the hell they pair up? If you request an Uber or a Lyft to come pick you up, how the hell is a company not responsible if they send an axe murderer to pick you up or a rapist to pick you up? They should have been accountable for day one. from day one. Fact is, Uber predominantly has paid off politicians as they continue to get into the ride sharing business across the country. The taxi business was pushing back. They saw the writing on the wall. They knew that this could mean the end of their business. So they were fighting back. But what Uber was doing was paying off politicians to allow this sort of business to take hold. And that is why they were granted a statutory exemption, because certain politicians were getting their coffers padded. What this politician is basically saying is, well, the money you gave us, the, the benefit of that is ran out, and it's time for your ass to step up to the plate. But they never, ever should have been exempted from being held accountable for who they pair up. As a driver, the fact that someone can hire you without even using their real name, no profile picture, or anything like that at all, there should not be an exemption for that. That's a huge safety risk. And the fact it in 2023, Uber and Lyft are still fighting against being held accountable it makes it clear. They're making a fortune off of not having to pay off insurance claims because the taxi business, as the article stated, they're held to that account. So if the taxi driver assaults a passenger, or something of that nature, the taxi business can be sued and held accountable. How did Uber and Lyft ever become exempt from this, other than by paying off politicians? This was wrong from day one. However, Uber, as always, is fighting back and actually reaching out to the customer and making their same typical threats. In a statement to its customers, 
The rideshare giant Uber said the measure is not about public safety. A new state law could drastically increase rider fares, Uber said. Disguised as a safety bill, this legislation could make rideshare too expensive for many communities. It could also lead to reduced rideshare availability, removing transportation options, and earnings opportunities for tens of thousands in Illinois. That's just another veil threat. If you hold us accountable, we're going to charge everybody a fortune, or we may have fewer vehicles on the road to pick you up, or we may take ride sharing out of Illinois completely. It's all bullshit, folks. The taxi business in the state of Illinois was flourishing before ride sharing came along, and they were being held accountable, as you see the politicians are stating. All of a sudden, Uber and Lyft comes along paying their drivers shitty wages, and somehow they don't have enough money to be held accountable when the taxi business has been doing it for eons. It's all smoke and mirrors, folks. Don't fall for the okie doke. This company, predominantly Uber, because I, oddly enough, I don't see Lyft ever fighting against these types of uh, provisions. When, it, when you see other states fighting to do something on behalf of the drivers, the pushback almost always comes from Uber. Lyft will sign on on it. Lyft will join it. But the initial, the initial attack almost always comes from Uber. Uber is really against treating drivers with any form of respect. Every article, every story I do where there's pushback, it is like 100% Uber. So understand that. Nevertheless, this bill, SB 2231, I strongly do feel like it is good news for the driver because... If Uber or Lyft pairs us up with passengers, pairs us up with folks in regards to food deliveries, they should have some account for who they are pairing us up with. After all, if you pick up a felon that takes your life, takes your innocence, or just takes your damn car, Uber and Lyft are the only ones who knew who that person was before you got to their house. They have the ability to run a background check on that person. If they drop the ball, they should be held accountable. They shouldn't just be able to pair you up with anybody that's willing to pay 10 bucks or whatever the hell the fare is. And that's what they have been doing. As long as I can get a fare, I'll send, any, send you to pick up anyone. Because if they do something to you, I'm not going to be responsible for it. So shout out to the state of Illinois for trying to pass this bill. Now, there's a little bit more to it than just trying. House Bill 2231 has already successfully passed the House by a wide margin in that state. It is now expected to be sent to the Senate where it is likely to be signed. And then, of course, the governor will make it law. And Illinois is a very liberal state. So the likelihood of this uh, emerging as successful is very high. I hate bringing up the liberal part, but I have to go into a political spill for a second. Why the hell are all of the fights on behalf of drivers coming from liberal states? I've done stories about Seattle, which drivers now in the state of Seattle, in, state of, in the state of Washington, dollar and 50 cent an hour in Seattle. They're getting paid out there. State of Oregon, obviously the state of California is always fighting on behalf of rideshare drivers. Here's the state of Illinois. We've done stories in regards to the state of Colorado, the Denver area fighting on behalf of drivers. Same thing up in Minnesota, Minneapolis area fighting on behalf of drivers. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Washington, D.C. We've done stories uh, coming out of Boston, Massachusetts. New York is always in the news. All Democratic-led states. They're going through the same shit in Birmingham, Alabama that they're going through in Boston. They're getting robbed down there, too. Why the hell are there no Republican states fighting on behalf of drivers? Do none of the politicians down there care about us? just want to point that out because I've been doing this for over a year now, and I don't see any legislation coming out of really any of the Republican states throughout this country. And it just doesn't make sense because we're suffering every damn where. It's not just happening in Democratic states. Getting ripped off in Florida and getting ripped off in Jackson, Mississippi. It's happening everywhere. So let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm getting it wrong. Nevertheless, I'd like to see how you folks feel about this. Now, obviously, driver reclassification 
I understand a lot of you folks being independent contractors. That can be a frightening term. But I will tell you, both Uber and Lyft are using the you have flexibility as a method and avenue to rip you off of your rights. They're, as long as they can keep you classified as totally independent, you have no rights. You have no rights and they're exploiting the hell out of it. What do you think about this? Do you think this is something that needs to be done nationwide? Do you favor this? Let your boy know in the comments. I just wanted to bring this to you because the idea that a passenger could be assaulted or a driver could be assaulted and the company that linked you two up together has no accountability for it. I don't think it ever should have been law to begin with. As always, it's your boy Tim. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.